Hey, I'm back. Um, I really hope this works. I'm on my grandma's internet. Uh, just got to Palm Springs yesterday, and I'm about to play the Arena Kings tournament, which I've never never actually played before. But it's a tournament specifically for streamers, so it starts in just under a minute. Um, I'm gonna check to make sure the stream looks okay, if that's even possible. There we go. Um, oh, Brayden's here. M Singer's here. Let me know if you can hear me, okay? And let me know if it's not lagging, because that would be nice. Um, seems like there's a good turnout. There's 50 players. Um, I actually don't know if that's a good turnout for this tournament, but there is several players above me. Eric Hansen is playing. Uh, many of these players I haven't heard of before. Killer Mania. Um, what seed am I? Wait, where am I? Why don't I see myself? That was strange. Okay. Well, I'm playing uh, some guy. Dianaski. Oh, it, it's not Swiss pairings, I guess. Um, cool. Uh, yeah, hello Enzi, hello Brayden, hello M Singer, hello Anakit. Um, yeah, this is new for me. I'm on chess.com. Um, it took me about like 20 minutes to set up the stream layout, so hopefully it looks okay. Bishop d2, not a common move. c5 is the most thematic response. Challenge d4. Maybe knight a6? Or maybe I just take with bishop eventually. Let's castle. Um, my biggest weakness with streaming and playing Blitz is moving too slowly. So I'm going to try and uh, not play too slowly. Knight a6. Oh, let's just take the pawn. The bishop's misplaced. Uh, knight c6, I guess. And I know, I remember there's a trap here. I'm wondering if I can somehow do the trap. Queen c7. Let's start with queen c7. The trap is when he plays b4, I go back to e7, then a5 can be very strong later. Um, and usually white underestimates the power of a5. I'm hoping it works in this position, because uh, now there's some positional play, the c5 square. And it looks very slow for black. Like The knight retreats, and black is a little bit slow to develop. But if I can play like d6, knight d7, knight c5, Terrible at drawing arrows, but you guys get the point. Uh, let's play knight d7. I've played the structure before, and it's usually pretty pleasant. Like a lot of these moves, I can play quickly. Rook, rook c8, rook d8, queen b8, queen a8. And sometimes white has a hard time figuring out what to do. The first follow, thank you, thank you, Karen. I wonder if that's a real Karen. It probably is a real Karen from uh, the Atlanta Chess Club. Appreciate that. Is Ben Feingold playing this? It's a bigger question. Uh, queen b8, I guess. No, queen b8 in, I don't know. Leaves b6 undefended, then this knight is overworked. Let's just play h6. He fell asleep. Ben Feingold fell asleep? That would be tragic. Okay, I can play queen b8 and just slowly move around. Is there increment? I don't even know the time control. I don't know where it says the time control. Uh, b6 is weak, let's go back. Wait, where does it say the time control? Play... No increment, okay, that's really good to know. I thought there was increment. I thought it was just the same as like titled Tuesday, but I guess not. Okay, I'm going to have to flag this guy. Um, now I have the d-file. Let's run uh, sneaky tricks. I just want to provoke weaknesses. Like if he plays g3, I'm slightly happier. If he plays f4, I'm slightly more happier. Just trying to tickle him. Okay, now I'll retreat. And now e4 is a target, this bishop's happy. The knight will probably have to go back to f6. Let's start with rook d7. Do stuff like this. It's a tricky position. 
it's going to come down to some kind of, kind of a time scramble. So I have to keep up the tempo. Some kind of battery on the D file. Uh, we're probably just going to trade off a bunch of stuff on the D file. But I really like this bishop. Especially like he, this pawn can't move backwards. So e4 is a constant target. I know now this diagonal is fully open. Um, he's going to play rook d1, kind of annoying. Queen d3, also kind of annoying. g6 only move. Rook d8 is coming though. Or not. Wait, what is he threatening? He's not threatening anything. Just play there. A scary position though. What do I do? Maybe bishop f3. Attack the rook. Take, take. Maybe I take and play rook d8. And maybe he'll blunder his rook on b7. If he plays rook c7, I play rook d2. So he'll probably take. And then I have to flag him. Maybe g5 at some point. Ah, oh, he wants to trade bishops. I don't want to trade bishops. I put the bishop on d3 if he plays bishop f3. Okay, g5. I have to open the position. If the position opens up, the two bishops will be king. And he's low on time now. That's good. Oh, he wants to trade bishops again. Stop it. I think bishop h1. Uh, he's attacking me. Let's play king g7, defending everything. The bishop will go somewhere at some point. Let's play h5. He's going to play bishop e4. I still don't want to trade. Like, that's the rule. When you have two bishops, don't trade off bishops. Because even though they're not too impressive right now, they might be impressive later. So this is scary because knight d6 is coming. I'll have to play bishop d7 and move the pawn somewhere like here. Oh no, I got forked. Okay, it's going to be a time scramble. Oh, I have to flag him. Now, when you pre move on chess.com, does it waste time? So I hope it does. Because that would give me better flagging chances. But this is really unpleasant. My bishop's stuck, my king's stuck. Is that mate? That's almost mate. This is painful. This is really painful. Please flag, please flag. Yes. Flag, yes. Okay. I got a point. Next game. Wait. Oh, it's like it's like Lee Chess. We start automatically. I thought it was a Swiss tournament. Can I berserk? I've never done this on chess.com. I thought like we wait till all the games finish. Wait, I'm so confused now. So it's just how long is this tournament? Is that 120 minutes or an hour and 12 minutes? If someone can please explain the format. Uh, Braden saying something. Chess.com Simon. Oh, Chess.com Simon is here. I don't think I've seen that guy before. I assume it's not Simon Williams. Maybe it is. So it runs two hours, okay. Uh, knight b5 is the principled move. And then the knight on b5 versus the knight on a6, it's, uh, it's a nice matchup. This knight is stuck for a long time. And then I think the plan is to play like knight e5, bishop e2, a4 can be thrown in. Let's start with bishop e2. Oh, so I get more points for streaks. So I have a, a streak of one game. Doesn't sound too impressive. So I should I should be able to see like the leaderboard. How do I see the tournament standings? Oh, I'm in 18th place. So how do you uh how do you berserk? Is there berserking options? Oh you can't berserk. Answered that question. F3 maybe? Oh, I had a fork. I still have a fork. That's a nice fork. 
what happens when your pieces are in good squares. It's probably a good thing that I can't berserk. I'll, I'll stay calm. I won't get tilted. Or if I do get tilted, I won't get even more tilted. And this is a nice position. He should just resign, and then we can play another game. Um, or he's going to fight on, which I respect that. Let's play rookie one, target the pawn. Rookie eight, I can start trading everything. Take, take, take. Wait, there has to be tactics here. Take, take. I can take on a7 too. Let's take on a7. It's a free pawn. The problem is, is rook's defended by everything. I wanted to like use some kind of pin, but it doesn't work. Now, why does it say join? It just switched from, I don't know what it was saying before. Did I leave the tournament? What is going on? Join. Okay, now I'm blundering because I'm confused with what it's saying. Uh, but maybe that wasn't a blunder. If I can take there, well, he can fork me on. No, he can't fork me. The knight's pinned. Okay. If someone could explain what's going on here, like this is very, very new for me. Okay, I'm gonna click next game. Oh, okay. So I'm still in the tournament. That's strange. So it was saying join, but I was I'm I'm already in the tournament. Um, and I'm tied for fourth place, I guess. I'm playing Le WGM Leslie, so interesting. Okay, let's move. Oh, he's playing a London, or she is playing a London. I'm going to play this line that I usually play with e6. I'll play the Wesley So line. I'm taking knight h5. Oops, I didn't want to play knight h5 right away. Oops. Okay. Still getting used to the nature of pre-moving here. Knight of four is coming. Maybe knight of four now. Attack and castle. Yeah, g3. G3 is a bit weakening though, because light squares could be vulnerable a bit later. I would like to play e5 here, but it gives me an IQP. It also probably loses a pawn. I'm gonna um I'll minority attack. Uh and take with queen and then like do this stuff. I think I'm okay taking again. And maybe f6. Wow, okay. This guy's playing very fast to keep up the pace. It's an interesting structure. So I'm not sure what's better, like the bishop or the knight. But at least black has this clear plan of creating weaknesses. I'll start with rook fc8, probably do this and this and this. Just have to watch out for the king side. I'm going to start with b4. Ah, knight c5 is coming, and bishop a4 doesn't work. I'm going to have to sack. Okay, I'll probably sack on c5. It's not what I wanted. I mean, I could cocoon, but that's no fun. Thing is, it's not that bad to be down the exchange. Because white's king is open, the rooks have no infiltration. Um, problem is, it's a long-term material advantage for black, or for white. Let's not trade queens. Play like queen a5. Hit the pawn. Maybe I'll play rook c8 and put the rook on c4. Ooh, c4, he's being aggressive. But I can take my defend d5. Okay, it's going to get a bit crazy. Oh, I could, I could play rook b2 as well. Like rook b2 coming. Thank you, Lord Kin Boat 999 Appreciate the follow. Rook b2 might be a good move if he takes. Because then I'm threatening all sorts of mates on the second rank. Um, and like he doesn't have too much time here. If he plays rookie two, I just take on c4. Uh, 
Uh, Raiden's asking a question, but I read too slowly. I'll try and answer the question a bit later. Have to focus in this position. It's a critical moment for white. Currently there's two threats, queen takes c4 and rook b2. Rook b2 still looks good. I mean, it looks crazy. I mean, queen e4 is possible, but then I take on h2. Sometimes positions like this, if you can get the initiative first, it's just gonna be uh, much better or, or winning. I have the time advantage, and White keeps thinking. That's a good sign. I wonder if he's going to like sack somehow. Or maybe he'll play a move like rook c3, and then... No, like, I was thinking he could move the rook and defend f2. Never mind. Could take on h2, but then rook e2 is possible. But that's probably good. Because I can take on d5 in the end. And I have like four pawns for the exchange, or three pawns for the exchange. Take or check? Probably take. Rookie seven comes. But I'll put the bishop on c4. Yeah, bishop on c4 is nice. Defend everything. Problem is my king's kind of stuck. I might play h5 here. Walk the king to g6. Like the bishop defends everything. Like everything's defended here. I can just probably flag him. Um, put the king on f5. Oh, I forgot about that pawn. Oops. That was unnecessary. That was completely unnecessary. Let's play bishop b3, planning a5, a4. I mean, I can still probably flag him. Bishop b3 again. Ah, I don't want to repeat. One thing I don't want to do. No, I don't want to check my checkmate myself either. I can walk the king. Okay. It's a pretty bad technique this game, but I think it's still looking good. Oop, I hung up on again. Okay, but he's taking. This is a losing king pawn ending. Okay, next game. Do you think if I win my last round next week, I should stop going to the club? I mean, okay, keep the winning streak. It's good to be able to be players below you consistently. So, I mean, you should stop going if it just becomes like, if, if you stop learning, basically. Um, but if you continue to learn, like if you have interesting games, you can keep going. But ultimately, it's your call. Um, what is this opening? Bishop f4. So weird. Let's play d5. And standings. Okay, I have a streak, but I don't know how many points I'm getting for this streak. It says I have nine points and I'm number seven out of 245 players. It sounds pretty decent. I want to play g5. g5 is a very thematic move. Um, and somehow we kind of transposed into a French. I don't really play the French, but I know some French ideas. Like queen b6, just pressure the pawn. Looks pleasant. And this sort of position, black can play on both sides. Like I have space on the king side and I have some pressure. I have pressure all over the place. Um, well, I can take on b2. Wait a minute, take on b2. And then like all his pawns are hanging, like all these pawns are weak. His rook's hanging. Yeah, this is just good. Knight b3, I think I can take here. Because I'm distracting the knight. Now I can take the rook. Uh, I don't think my queen's getting trapped. His knight still attacked. His pawn's attacked. Everything's falling apart for white. Queen b2 back. The only concern is my queen. My queen. Oh, I could have taken on e2. I can still take on a2. And black is up a significant amount of material. 
problem is I need to get the pieces in the game. I want to play d4, but then... Actually, d4 is a fine move. But then knight e4. I could take... I can't waste time here. Let's play bishop d7. Develop. And the bishop comes to e6. If he plays rook a1, I have queen b4. And probably the queen can come back. And things are solid. Ooh, discoveries. Uh, I'm not really scared, though. <laughs> Where is this knight going? Queen c7, if necessary, can come next. Even queen d8. Queen d8 might uh, give him significant problems, but I'm, I have to keep b7 defended, too. It's going to be patient. Maybe b6, undermine this knight. And queen d8 is the plan. Or I could do some discovery. Nah. Now I'm threatening knight d4. Nice discovery. I'm also threatening this pawn. Kind of a long-term target. Can take. Black is up a lot of pawns. Six pawns to three pawns and up the exchange. Take, take. Take on e5. Wow. Okay, well, we're just trading. I'll play queen g5. Oh, he's pinning me. I could take on f2 and then castle. That's kind of funny. I could castle right away. Let's take on f2. It's a fun line. Castling with check. I could just go in for the kill, queen h4 and g3. That looks nice. Because when he takes on c6, g3, it's unstoppable, mate. Life is good. Yeah, castling really helped out. Usually castling is like a defensive move, but it was a very aggressive move in that case. Okay, next game. No time to waste. Four out of four, currently in sixth place. I'm playing Eric Hansen, chess bra. I think he's also streaming. Uh, let's play a ready, and maybe he'll play King's Indian attack. Uh, yeah, I'll play my kind of pet line where I take on e4. Uh, bishop e7, and then knight c6. Knight c6 is kind of the unusual move, but it's playable. Um, I think I can take again. I forget the theory exactly, but remember the idea is like knight d4, rook d8. d4 looks playable. It's not on c6, it's kind of awkward. Uh, let's play rook d8. Anyway, he's going to play c3. Yeah. Uh, what to do? I want to play c5. Mm, bishop f8, but then bishop g5. Okay, I'm just going to push the a pawn. Like when in doubt, play a5. Ah, oh, that's scary. Knight g5 coming, or bishop g5 coming. I could be brave and play g6. But let's play a5. A4, because now rook a5 is a plan. I think maybe he missed this. And this is kind of a nasty pin. My time management is not good so far, but my rook is good. He's going to play something like, oh, actually, h4 or f4 ran into h6. So that looks reasonable. Can I play f5? f5 looks like a fork. It looks weakening, but it's a fork. Why not? I mean, he might punish me somehow. Oh, that was a good move. Take, take. That was a very good move. F5 was bad. <laughs> but I can play rook e8 and survive. Take, take there, h6. Okay, what else to do? Um, so bishop take e7, rook take e7, knight g5, h6. 
and things are defended, sort of. But this, this structure is very weak. Maybe I'll play like knight d8, knight f7, trade stuff off. But this rook is attacked too. Um, queen e8, defend. The plan is knight d8 and just start trading. That's a really good positional move because e5 is weak. He might take on c6 and play knight e5. Or that move also looks pretty strong. I can play this. We can trade bishops. If we can just trade everything and get a quiet position, that would make me happy. Okay, that move doesn't make me happy. There, there, take, take. Maybe h6. Doesn't do anything though. b5 maybe? There's so much pressure. Like It seems like he's going to have some tactic at some point. But if we can relieve all the pressure, like I just want to take on d5. The problem is this is pinned. Like This pawn is pinned to the rook along the e-file. So there's so much x-ray vision here. Maybe I play rook a6 next. Just defend stuff. That was probably a good move. Let's take, take. That was a very good move. I'm getting forked. Take, take. That's unfortunate. But am I losing anything? The bishop's defended. Oh, I lose the rook. Oops. Okay, I resign. That was really sad. Hello, DJ Chess Dog. Good to see you. And I only lost three rating points. But now my streak is zero. That's so bad. Hello to Axe Villager. Long time no see. Gotta stay hydrated. It's like 90 degrees outside today. It's California weather. It's only springtime in California too. Well, at least we have a London. E6 is a move. I wonder if he'll, he'll try and like defend the pawn. This is actually an interesting line. Uh, I have to remember the theory. I think I take and then bishop d7. Pretty sure bishop d7 is a stockfish move. And it's almost a novelty. The idea is to play b6, and I'm not allowing bishop b5. That was slightly unexpected. b6 is still coming. And like this whole structure is going to fall apart very soon for white. Hello to Meyer, 47. I was not a beast in that, that last game, unfortunately. Unless he's talking, he's talking about the other Eric. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, Eric is Eric is a beast. Is referring to Eric Hansen, not uh, not myself. Uh, queen. Okay, I'm gonna play. I wanted to play ninety four. Bishop a four also a move. I'm gonna start with this. I just want to pressure the b four pawn. Bishop take b4 is coming. I don't think he can defend this. Or maybe he can. I mean, knight e4 looks really fun. The threat is queen a5. <laughs> okay, that's reasonable. I mean, I can still play queen a5, bishop b4. I and mean, there has to be, like, a massive pressure after knight d2. He has to play rook d1. I could take on a2 maybe at some point. Okay, how am I winning this? I could just castle. Just castle. I wanted to take on b5, but he would take back with check. Now maybe I can take on b5. This is just crushing. I'm deflecting the queen from defending d2. And then I'll take the a2 pawn. Oh, but then he has rook b2. Wait a minute, I have knight c3 coming. Okay, good game. That was a decent recovery. Allude 64. So many people have 64 in their, uh, their username. See, my very first online account name was chessdude64. 
Um, and this guy's locking into opening prep. Like whatever he takes back with queen g4 is actually kind of annoying for black. Um, just a tricky London line. It only happens with this move order. Uh, dude is not spelled D-O-O-D, it was spelled D-U-D-E. Um, but that's a nice, uh, it's an interesting misspelling. I want him to play knight e4 so I can mate him on d8. Um, but he's not falling for it. Okay, he wants to play b5. He's also preventing knight b5. How can I distract him? Can I play e4 here? e4 it looks really funny. I'm going to play e4. The idea is, like, you want to open the center when the king's still in the center. And this knight's pinned to the d8 square. So he's going to move his queen, probably queen b6. And I don't know if I'm achieving that much. I'll probably just have to complete development. Like knight f3. Okay, he wants to trade stuff. Hmm. I don't want to trade. I could retreat. I could play knight g5. Knight g5 looks overly ambitious, but it has a point. Like, he can't play h6 with the media threat because the h pawn's pinned. In the meantime, I want to play knight e5 and target f7. Ooh, rook h7 hangs something. Uh, maybe we don't trade queens. Yeah, let's keep queens on the board. <laughs> Rook h7, what was that move? Uh, okay, I'm going to develop and then... Knight e5 is coming. Oh, c7 was hanging. Oops. Completely forgot about c7. Bishop g6 looks like a fun move. I don't know if it does anything, though. Put the rook in the center. Uh, I really want to play bishop g6, but he just takes on e5. Okay, I'm going to play c3, just solid. Okay, now bishop g6 is a move. Because he can't take it because he gets forked and f7 can't be defended. And now everything falls apart. Ooh, that's nice. Okay, nice game. Back on the streak. I'm playing a decent player. Um, I'm gaining some rating points. I haven't played chess.com blitz in a long time. So I think my rating is slightly like provisional now. C4, this is, I think, considered dubious. But actually, I think as far I played this as white. I think this is playable. Yeah, this is definitely a line. Um, I know e5 is supposed to be played at some point. Just play it right away. Bishop d2, interesting. The problem is I don't really have too much experience in this structure. Um, I assume the bishop should be on d4. Like if he plays b4, bishop d4, it's a good bishop. I'm also slowing down f4. I could play a5, positional move. Preventing expansion, maybe ideas of a4. And d5 is also an interesting move. d5, we take a bunch of things. We gotta play faster. Let's play rook b8. Just preventing b4. It might be typical for him to play knight a4, but I'm ready to play bishop d4, and then maybe I'll play c5. Or maybe not. What to do? Take. And then d5, maybe? You only live once. d5, we take... Oh, h7 could hang in the end, so I would take with queen. Looks playable, and I'm making him think. Sometimes in blitz, you just want to make your opponent think, and then flag them. Okay, knight c5, interesting. I mean, I want to play knight g4 and queen h4, but he has h3. 
Mm. How do I develop the bishop? Bishop g4? It looks slightly pointless. Like the bishop doesn't seem to be doing that much, but the plan is bishop here. And then eventually bishop g6. Where does the queen go? Queen c6, I guess. But then there's tactics. It's kind of annoying. The queen doesn't have too many squares here. It's queen d6. I still want to do this maneuver. Uh, yeah, let's take and then queen d7, maybe. Threatening bishop f5. Not sure where he's going to put the rook. Maybe he'll play rook bc1. Hmm, bishop d3. I forgot about that move. g6. g6 looks weakening, but it has its purpose. His bishop f5 is kind of hard to stop now, unless he moves a queen. But where does he move the queen? The queen has no squares except e1. Then I at least have bishop take f2. Wait, bishop take f2, queen take f2. He's threatening f7. Mm, I mean, this can't be good for whites. Maybe e4? Hmm. I'm going to play here. Now I'm threatening bishop take f2, and if he moves his bishop to e4, I have bishop c4. Okay, so that's reasonable. Take, take. Okay, let's move the rook somewhere more useful. Hello to XI Sparks. How's it going? Okay. I gotta get the time advantage too. I think that's most important. I mean, my position's nice. The time would be nicer. Let's do this. Oh, is rook d1 a move? Rook d1, queen b2. I still have pressure. b4 is weak. I could go after b4. I could go after stuff on the king side too. And I have the time advantage. Xi sparks, I'm doing well. I'm just very, very busy. A lot of stuff happening. Okay, this position needs my full focus. Uh, Maybe... I want to take? I don't want to take. Because this bishop is awkward. Like the bishop's tied down to the pawn. Oh, I could take and play bishop d3. I win the exchange. Oh, I don't win an exchange? Rook b4, but then queen c2. Okay, this should be good enough. He's defending the pawn. Mmm, sneaky move. This might just be winning. He can't stop rook a1. That's nice. That was unexpected, too. It's just game over. Wow, that ended kind of abruptly. I mean, I had the constant pressure and time advantage. So sometimes in cases like that, it just uh, it just leads to good things. Okay, another London bread and butter opening. He plays c6. Let's play knight d2. And we're going to go into this... Uh, Usual line, queen b6. I've had so many games like this. Let's play b4. Threatening b5 already. Rook c8 is the best move here. Ooh. Um. Well, he's threatening knight h5. So I'll start with h3. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I can play this. This bishop is always controlling b8, so... When we trade pawns and the v-file opens, he can't get the rook to b8. A very important factor in the position. So one of the main ideas for black is to play e5. Which might come pretty soon. Uh, what pawn to take? It probably doesn't matter. Play knight f3. So I'm discouraging e5. And at some point I want to win the a-pawn. I'll start slowly, bishop e2. I'm fine with taking. 
we could trade or we or I could play king um I could castle or play king d2 here he wants to take and play e5 which is a little bit annoying to do he's not very high rated okay I'm gonna play this I think the king should help out on the the queen side so e5 happens we could trade everything take take oh he wins g2 in the end that looks okay because his pawns are fixed on light squares like his c6 pawn is going to be weak and we're just trading the position does transform though question is do i play rook g1 or rook h2 after bishop take g2 oh he's going for immediate attack interesting king c3 be a little bit careful I don't think he should have allowed f3 though oh he wants to play rook b3 ah I forgot about that move oops well it's still equal material but he has a lot of pressure here oh this is not what I wanted yeah that was bad This is going to take some, some survival skills. This is really bad. Okay, let's play king f2. I'm walking into bishop d3, but I didn't really see what else to do. Oh, he's going for the pawn promotion. Okay, I can live with that. Because my rook will be on a1 and my king will walk back, hopefully. Well, now I have bishop d1. Bishop d1 is a nice move. Because he's still down a pawn, right? Or can I not count? I can't count. It's equal material. But maybe we'll trade stuff. Uh oh, wait, take, take. Oh, the the end game's losing for me. I have to play king b2. That's very unpleasant. He's gonna win g2. This is bad. Ah, I really butchered this. H4 maybe? H4, there, there, there. Okay. Only chance. I gotta somehow flag him, but that's difficult. <sighs> down two pawns and down on time. Thanks for the follow, whoever you are. I see the notification, but I can't, I don't have time to read the name. Okay. Ah, this is sad. This is really sad. Ooh, maybe I can cut him off though, and then start free moving. Hey, I won. I flagged him. That was unexpected. Oh, man. The endgame technique. Uh, well, that's a relief. Hello to Mini Anti 
Toko on Umpo. I'm doing well today. How are you? Um, okay, let's play. Let's play e4. Play more aggressively. Play a Grand Prix. Mm, this is a real Grand Prix. One of my favorite openings. Unfortunately, uh, Axe Villager, we can't play the Scotch against a Sicilian. I'll keep it in mind to play the Scotch in future games. But this is a great blitz opening, Grand Prix, because the ideas like are so natural, even going into the middle game. Like there's so many rich attacking ideas. Let's start with Queen G3. Queen H3, F5. Maybe G4, G5. I've always wanted to be good at this game, but I haven't put in the time. Um, yeah, you have to put in the time. To be good at anything, really, you have to put in time. Um, and the way to do that is either through discipline or through passion. Like, find ways to enjoy it, and then putting in the time is something that you'll want to do. I'm happy with this position. Like, g4, g5 is coming, and black doesn't have too many like immediate ideas. Just gonna pawn storm. Maybe even trap the queen. Well, now I'm not trapping the queen. Let's start with this. I can play h4 next. And then win connect four. I haven't checked the standings, but I'm in fifth place, it looks like. I have a streak of four games. Um yeah, this is a very much a learning experience for me. I can play e5 here, and then d5, and his bishop is sad. I mean, my, my bishop's kind of sad, too. If he plays c4, both our bishops are pretty depressed. The nice thing is that, I mean, the attack is going to come so quickly on the king's side. Uh, we can take... Now this bishop is happy because I play c3 and bishop b1. I think his best chance was to play c4 there. But okay, there's so many attacking ideas combined. Like combining f5 and bishop b1 and h4. This should be over very soon. What to do? Bishop g5 maybe? Okay, let's start with bishop b1. And f6 possibilities. Okay, we can trade off the rooks. I think I just won a pawn in that, uh, in that sequence. Rook a3 is kind of annoying. Um, I'm looking at f6, g take f6, and queen h4. I think it is knight g6. Hmm. Bishop g5. Uh, what to do? Visually, it looks amazing. I'm going to play rook c1. It's an open file. Maybe it's the wrong idea, but looks reasonable. Take, take. Um, okay, I'm going to just trade off rooks because his rook is annoying me. Ooh, did I miss something? Take. Okay, I can take. He won the pawn back. I want to have tactics against his queen. Oh, this is nice. Bishop take h7. And he can't take because knight g5 wins the queen. And now I think queen h3 should be crushing. He has one check on a1, but then king g2. Hmm. 
I'm not actually threatening mate here, but something should work out, I would think. What is that move? That was strange. Now I can play bishop c2 check. I'm just going to play bishop d2 because I don't see what he's doing. Okay, good game. Next game, I have a streak of five. I'm playing this guy again, who I think I beat earlier. I forgot how I beat him, but pretty sure I won. We have a perk. F3, I guess. Very early queenside expansion. He wants to play e5. Mm, what to do? Bishop e3. Development's kind of awkward for white, but I'm going to try and find some harmony. Like play knight g3 and then, then the king side can develop. And maybe combine it with like h4, h5. Yeah, this looks pleasant. Ooh, h5, very ambitious. So if I play g5, he plays h4. Okay, that can't be too bad. Because I have this move. But now I'm kind of stuck again. This is a very strange opening. Maybe knight c1. Thank you for the follow, the fail gamers. Appreciate that. Okay, I'm just going to develop. It's not that easy to attack on the king side. It's like things are pretty closed down. But h4 could be a potential weakness like later. He doesn't necessarily want to castle. Bring the rook away from h8. e5 is interesting because g5 could be hanging in some lines. Maybe c3. I still want to develop like knight e2. Oh, that was probably a good move because I'm losing g5. But do I care? I don't care too much. We'll have rook g1. f4 is kind of weak. It doesn't feel like I'm down a pawn. My center is pretty beautiful. Queen d2 coming. And knight b3. There's some comp here. Knight a5, maybe. Oh, I could take. No, I can't take on f4. Taking on f4 could be a future idea. Somehow exploiting the g file. What to do? Rook b1, maybe? It's a weird position. Like, both of us don't want to commit to castling. Uh, Queen h4 looks like it's coming. Let's play this. I think my king is relatively safe in the center. Let's play knight b7. Pretty exotic move, but I just want to target d6. He defends. a4 maybe? a4 doesn't really do much. e5 I don't want to commit to. Okay, I'll move back. Mm, queen f2 coming. I don't want to trade queens, but it makes the position easier to play. My king will probably just land on d2, and I have to play quicker. Hmm. Take, take. Okay, let's bring the knight back. Someday I want to play a4. Let's start with knight c5. I don't think I'm scared of him taking. Oh, maybe I am, because he has knight a4 in the end. That was a mistake. But I'll try and uh, make things complicated. Okay, he doesn't take. That's good. Take, take. Bring this other knight to b3. Time situation is not that great, though. King e2, getting off the d file. But I'm losing a pawn. 
this is bad. So now I'm down two pawns. But it's still a playable position. Just have to keep things complicated. Maybe I win the h pawn. My king on e2 is relatively safe, and this knight's good on b3, covering d2. Maybe I'll play rook d1 next. Oh, that was a good move. I forgot about that. Ouch. I, oh, bishop f1 looks so ugly, but rook g2. Bishop c5 doesn't kill me. Okay, I gotta move quick. Gotta flag this guy. Or girl. WGM Leslie So. To draw. Do I get points for drawing? 31 points, number seven. Oh, that's unfortunate. Okay. Mm, I had the time advantage too. Maybe I shouldn't have traded rooks. Okay, what to do? New game. Knight c6 happens. Hey, we have a scotch. Hopefully Axe Villager is still here and he's happy. Uh, let's do... Wait, what's the move here? Knight f6? I think knight f6. We're going into this line. This is not a typical scotch. It actually transposed to a two knights. Uh, whatever we call this. Um... Maybe f5. I don't know too much theory here. I know f5 is one idea. Now the f file is open. Bishop d6 will probably come and c5. This looks pleasant. I have pieces to attack with. So there's 63 minutes left. That's a long time. A lot can change in 63 minutes. Mm, bishop g4, enticing. I just want to build up pressure. I, I have almost all my pieces with potential to attack on the king side. Hello to EVH, good to see you. I think there's far less people, at least in the chat, than, uh, than normally. So it's a nice, uh, Nice and small crowd today. Bishop g6. Whoa, okay, g4 is just so weakening. Um, he's trying to be aggressive though. Maybe I have to take. Yeah, I'm gonna take and play queen d6. And now there's the threat against the rook. There's also a threat of knight e4. So a move like queen e2 just runs into knight e4 and his rook is trapped, I think. So that's reasonable. Rook f3. King g2. Hmm. Okay, I'll build up pressure first. And there's a few weaknesses to exploit. Now I think rook, f rook f3 is good. I wanted to follow up with bishop e4. The problem was he had rook take e4 in that other line. But now after king g2, bishop e4, I think it's just crushing. Uh, Tama Lear, why can't you join the cash arena? Can you late join? I'm not entirely sure. I'm pretty sure you can late join. But I don't know. Um, 
I know very little about, about how this tournament works. Um, all I know is how to play chess. Okay, I'm going to play queen here, attacking the knight, attacking this pawn. This pawn is still hanging. Uh, we can take on f2. Knight d7. Should be okay. So late join is possible. That's cool. It's like title Tuesday. I think late join is impossible. But I have to take with pawn. Oh, so I have, okay. I didn't realize this, but I can see like the number of points everyone has. So I have 31 points. Eric Hansen has 37 points. So I'm not too far away from him. And he lost his streak. That's good. I still don't know how the point system works. Like if you're on a streak, how does that, how does it give you more points? Does having a streak of nine give you more points if you win or... Is it like Lee Chess where you, you can only win like a maximum of points if you're on a streak? Okay, I just want to like finish this off. G5. I don't see an immediate mate, but he's about to flag. Bring the queen back, target H3. Hmm, he's being annoying. We can trade everything. It's a winning king pawn ending. Can I like, oh, I could pre-move. Um, or I could like uh, pre-move multiple moves in a row. Maybe that would be useful in some cases. Bertoldo. Paliri, hello. Oh, he's doing something. Uh, why aren't you playing for cash on Lee Chess? Isn't that easier on Chess doc easier than Chess.com? Um, tomorrow there's a very big event on Lee Chess. Um, it's a titled arena with a first place prize of over two thousand dollars, which I think Magnus Carlson is playing in. Um, so I'll definitely be there for that. I'm not actually playing in it. I was asked by uh, Lee Chess admins to do the official stream so i'll be giving commentary for like two to three hours however long the event runs so that should be cool um yeah for the regular viewers usually i stream on lee chess but in a streaming tournament like this on chess.com i mean how can you resist so okay bishop d3 Um, it's a slightly unusual setup with white cast and queen side, but I enjoy positions like this in Blitz because it's easy to play. Always play king b1. And now there's some idea of, uh, of attacking on the king side. Start with d5. If he takes, if he tries to win a pawn on d5, I have bishop h7 in the very end. So maybe he'll play e5. I was not expecting that move. I can take and it's weakening. Take, take. Let's do it. Something should be good. Maybe I'll bring the knight to g6. So yeah, I'm expecting a lot more viewers tomorrow than today. I haven't even checked the viewer count. Wow, 29 viewers. Um, well, hello to all 29 of you. Uh, if you haven't said hello in the chat, feel free to do so. Um, if there's any new viewers out there, welcome. Um, I haven't streamed too recently, but I'm planning to stream more this coming week. This should be Force Mate somehow. Maybe not, King H8, Knight G6. Should be some kind of like windmill. Okay, he resigns. Next game. Hello, Daniel Moreno. Good to see you. It's going well. On a streak. Streak of two games only. Okay, let's play e4. Get some more e4 games in. Play this French line. 
I guess 29 viewers isn't bad given that so many other people are streaming. And we have a Rubenstein French, which I'm completely fine with. Uh, we can take on f6. Half the time I play this, black gets a queen trapped on f6. Like, white wants to play bishop d3 and bishop g5. So he knows uh, he knows to play h6, okay. Um, now the other plan for white is to just castle queen side and attack on the king side. Or attack in the center. Like, look at this development. Black is playing like so slowly to develop his pieces. Now I'm going to queen side castle and just everything will be developed. Uh, knight c6 is a good move. I should probably retreat. And the queen on e7 is just, just so so awkward. Castle queen side. Queen on d6 is still awkward. Okay, he wants to play b5. Just put the put everything in the center. Good things should happen at some point. Knight e5 maybe. Queen e3 is a move. I'm gonna play queen e2. A subtle move. Now there's a bit more pressure on his queen. And now I'll play knight e5. I just wanna like open up some lines in the center. I have ideas of f4, f5. Though queen a5 is likely to happen. Bishop d6. Okay, now I think, is there tactics? Take, take. Bishop b5, he can take with bishop on b5. This doesn't look right. Okay, I'm going to take and play queen g4. Felt like there should have been something better, but just didn't see it. I mean, I still have a lot of pressure since this queen g7 pawn is currently hanging. Um, oh, he castles queen side. Oh, somehow he escaped this. Can take on g7 though. It should be up a pawn because f7 is hanging. Queen c3 comes with check if he plays rook g8. Now the idea is if he takes one f2, I have rook f1, and I win f7. Question is how do I make use of this like battery? Probably queen e5. Oh, but then queen take g3, and queen take e6. Rook c7 immediately probably doesn't lead to much. Yeah, this is trickier than I thought. I'm gonna be up a pawn after taking on e6. I can take on h6. Should be enough to win. Okay, he's attacking me. I have queen b6 here. Looks reasonable. And his king is far less safe than my king. But now he's defending b7 with his queen. I have queen c7. Hmm. I should just play quietly like a3. I gotta move quicker. I figured out about time. He takes on d3, I probably take with rook. Still have the extra pawn. A uh, tricky move, but now we're just trading. Still up a pawn. I'll get the time advantage and then I'll flag him. Or I'll just convert the end game. Rook should probably stay. Where does a rook want to go? 
Probably on f3. Never mind. <laughs> d7. The king will come in. My king will come to c3. Chess.com needs to fix their arrows. Because when I draw the arrow from a2 to c3, the king doesn't move like a knight. Uh, okay, let's do this. Very nice time advantage. And the deep pawn's the pass pawn. Okay, next game. Uh, Doc Holly, thanks for streaming. First time watching it live. Oh, wow. Usually watch my lectures on call at the hospital. Are you sick or are you a doctor? <laughs> thanks for the message, though. Appreciate that comment. Um, oh, he's okay. You're probably a doctor if you're on call. Uh, Brayden asking an odd question. If people were to play guess the move of top players, do you recommend look at the games with openings you play or the opposite? Wait, what? Yeah, look at, like, if you're going to practice with guess the move, look at games where a strong player played your opening and won. Because then you, you not only practice opening, you practice the middle game structures that come from the opening. Um, and just all around, you can focus on many different areas. We have some kind of weird open Sicilian. I actually don't know any theory in this line, but it looks decent. Maybe I'd keep the bishop on this diagonal. Well, this bishop is really annoying. And even queen b6 here, just prophylaxis against bishop e3. And what I'm doing, I'm just trying to prevent him from casting kingside. Because if he castles queenside, I'm ready to attack. Though maybe uh, maybe that's the best option for him. And the attack isn't that simple. A4, B4. Oh, he has knight D5. Tricky, tricky. Knight D5. A4 is a good move. What to do? Oh, wait, maybe knight d5 is not that bad. Because I can just take it with a pawn. Okay, he plays a5. Wow. It's interesting. Actually, knight d5 probably just is the piece here. So maybe he'll play knight a4. Knight a2, logical. You can take on a5, but let me trade. I'm gonna play knight d4, and we might be trading off b pawns. But I like the fact that his king is still in the center, because if I win b2, there's like c3 weaknesses. I mean, he might just play rook b1 here, but then a5 hangs. I didn't know I should be looking at openings. Yeah, I mean, really any sort of game is of value. I like to look at miniatures, like look at quick games where one player had an attack. Um, but it depends what you want to practice. Okay, let's take here. So we trade, and he still can't castle. I mean, I can't castle either, really. I still have to develop. Now f6 is coming next. Uh, M4Xer likes to see me play the London. Um, yeah, I'll play more Londons. I've been playing e4 in recent games. So against lower rated players, I found e4 is a quicker way to try and win. So he would like to play bishop e3, but it would hang a5. Well, maybe it's complicated because my bishop would also be attacked. Okay, what's going on here? I can take on e4 and just win a pawn. 
think the lines work out. So I can take on d3, intermediate move. And he still can't castle. That's great. And I went upon. And all his stuff is weak. Ooh, that move. But I can take his rook in the end. He's not even winning like the knight back because his knight's attacked. So now black's up a rook. But he can finally castle. Um, okay, king f2. So let's just convert this. Up a full rook. Life is good. F6 coming. Just want to open files. Problem is rooks aren't effective if there's no open files. Ooh, this is going to be mate. Okay, next game. No time to waste. I have a streak of four. I'm in sixth place. Rocky zero two. Wait, this guy looks really familiar. I'm going to click on his profile in just a moment. So we have an Alapin Sicilian. I've played hundreds of games in this line. Uh, eventually we'll get some IQP position. He'll play bishop e3 most likely, forcing me to take. He'll play knight c3, queen d6. And really the game starts around like move 15 after we both develop. Okay, development's pretty smooth. Okay, maybe I can start thinking. Maybe knight a5, logical move. And these squares could be exploitable. Knight e5 is logical. Oh, he wants to play bishop f4. Interesting. Maybe knight d5 here. Queen h5, g6. Hmm. I'm gonna play g6 immediately. It looks weakening, but it kills his bishop. h4 is so aggressive. I play h5. Wow, oh, what to do? I don't always like it when people attack me. Knight d5, h5. Go in a pawn there. A pawn's a pawn. Oh, he's attacking me more. Okay, let's defend. A scary position. A lot of firepower on the king side. Bring the knight towards the center. Can't be a bad thing. Unless he just mates me immediately. This is scary. Like, I feel pretty scared. Because he has so many pieces. Okay, I could take knight f4. Whoa, things are crazy. I have to go for the counterattack. I could take on e5 first, maybe. That's not a bad thing, though. f6 is going to be very weak. Though I could take his knight in the end. Nice. Oh, he has knight f6 first. No. Maybe it's not that bad, though. Oh, maybe it is that bad. This is looking really bad. How did that happen? Knight f5. Oh, he's threatening to win the queen, too. Man. King f8, maybe? And what else to do? And my time situation is just awful. King g8. Okay, I'm happy with the draw. <laughs> uh, knight here, I guess. Oh, he's going to take, though. Ah, that's bad. Wow, it's been a while since I've lost that badly. I can take here. All right, maybe I'm not losing yet. Still make him work for it. Take here. Ooh, 
This is really bad. That was a good move. Oh, and he's 2440. Ouch. Uh, well, maybe he'll, ma he'll hang mate on G2. Please. I don't know why I'm playing this on, but I mean... I'm threatening Maiden 1, so all it takes is one bad move. Okay, now I can resign. What happened to Lee Chess? I still love Lee Chess. I'm streaming there tomorrow. I'm just playing a streamer cash tournament on chess.com. Um, and Solea, so probably a returning viewer. And Neo Flatfoot believing in me. I appreciate that. Okay, Intermaster 2017. Uh, let's come back here. We'll play a time on off. Try and recover. I don't think I've had a mainline time on off yet. Ninety five. This guy destroyed Eric Hansen. Okay. Well, hopefully he doesn't destroy Eric Rosen. B five. Um, another aggressive player, bishop b7. Oh, maybe I should have played, I should have played d6 first. I forgot my opening nuances. So knight h5, I'm going to try and slow him down. Ideally, I should have played d6, knight fd7. It's bad move order. It's not a good start. Braden asking more questions. I can't look at the question now. Maybe after this game. Because um, I'm under very bad pressure. But I do have two bishops. This is a pretty scary pawn storm. Bishop c5. I would like to make use of this f4 square somehow. Like maybe e5 at some point. Okay, that was unexpected. Maybe that's a good move. Take, take. It's probably a very good move. Yeah, I'm feeling the pain. Take, take, take. This is bad. This d7 hangs. Okay, let's try and make the most of this position. This is so bad though. Like, what do I do? Castle queenside? I should probably just resign. Wow, some pretty painful games back to back. But you should never give up hope. Ah, he wants to play f6. f6 is killer. Like, what do I do here? It's just, there's no hope. H6, maybe. Remove the pawn. I take here. Oh, queen a7. Ouch. Okay, I resign. That was pretty brutal. Resign. That's why I'm looking forward to tomorrow. I don't have to play chess tomorrow. I just have to commentate. Tomorrow is probably just watching Magnus Carlsen's games. It's going to be fun. Hello to Nickup. I don't know if I said hi, um, but I'm sorry. Uh, you have to see such graphic games. Uh, let's play C4. Let's change things up a little bit. And I have to move quicker. I'll play this line. Some kind of Benoni. Benoni with E3. 
I guess e5 is playable. Knight d2, typical move. Did he just hang a pawn? Maybe it's a sacrifice, but it looks like a free pawn. Seems like he's just playing fast. But, okay, I'm up a pawn now. He'll have some kingside attack. But I'll live with it. Maybe f4? f4? Hmm. I'm going to start with rook b1. And then b4. I feel like this guy just does, has no respect for me. That's why he's playing so fast. Uh, knight g4 is a good move. He wants to play bishop f6. He also has ideas of targeting this knight. <sighs> Scary line, but I think this is okay. My queen can go to f3. It's still scary. Queen e4 maybe, or queen. It's still scary. Queen e4. And the queen doesn't want to be on e4. A knight wants to be on e4. It's a bit awkward, but maybe I'll play queen c2 at some point. Take, take, take. This might be okay. He was just playing so quickly. It's so scary. He wants to play bishop f5. Surviving, up a couple pawns. Defending h3. Now I just want to play queen g5, just trade queens. The time situation is not good. Opposite colored bishops. How many pawns am I up? Should be up enough. Okay, we're in a trade. This might just be a draw, but... Oh, he has to trade, actually. Maybe I'll still push for a win? Oh, no, I hung a bishop. No! Please play rook d5. No. Oh, carelessness. Maybe he'll forget about f5. Actually, there's still hope here. That was so bad, though. So bad. There's still hope. Barack Obama. F6 coming. I didn't calculate this, but I'm hoping it works. Oh, I queen with check. Yes. Okay, now pre-moving time. Somehow this is working out. Yes, 
Yes. I somehow won that after blundering a bishop. Yay. Okay. I have a streak of one game. Yeah, it would have been painful to lose two games in a row. And that, that attack was scary. Like, he was uh, moving so fast. And he almost beat me. Playing this guy again. Man, this is just nonstop chess. Okay, we have a Verisov type gambit. I actually have studied some theory here. This move c6 is kind of sneaky. The idea is if he takes, I play e5. If he doesn't take, I actually don't know what to do. Maybe bishop here. Should just be up a pawn. Maybe we're just trading. Yeah, he'll take on e4. Or not. This looks pleasant, because I'm up a pawn. He's severely overextended. h6 is maybe strong. Ideas of queen h4. I'll play queen a5. I'll try and attack from both directions. His king has nowhere safe to go. In the center, it's going to get harassed. On either side of the board, it's going to get attacked. Um, bishop d6 is nice. I'm threatening bishop g3. Which maybe he missed. Queen f5 happens. Wait, how am I mating him? Am I mating him? I would like to mate him. King g2. Hmm. We'll start with this move. I'm just attacking the h4 pawn. Doing defensive stuff. Yeah, I might just have to bring more pieces into the action and like develop the knight. Because he's still kind of stuck. I'm fine with this. Castle queenside. So I looked at queen f5 and bishop f3, but I thought after king g2, he's just controlling f3 enough times. Um, maybe I missed something, though. OK, we could trade queens. Or we could not trade queens. I just want to bring a rook to the g file. He wants to make things complicated. But the opening of the d file should play in my favor. Hopefully. Okay, let's do this. My bishops are so strong. Queen e5 coming. Queen f6 coming. Oh no, I didn't want to play f6. I wanted to play queen f6. What is f6? Oh, this annoying mouse slip. It was more of a trackpad slip. Okay, c5 should kill him. Because there's a pin. Tricky move. I can take this though. So he has no checks. And I'm attacking the queen. So we'll probably play queen a3. But okay. Mm, 
might have to defend a little bit here. I'll run my king. Oh, he has rook b7 though. Oops. That was unnecessary. That was completely unnecessary. Yeah, let's not lose this. This is such a good position. I just got completely careless. Ooh, f6 happens. Okay, f6 was just such a bad move. Play this. Check. Okay, he's playing passively, which is good. Bishop b5 will come. And rook g8 is like mating. Oh, uh, where's my mate? Such bad quality chess here. Rook g8. Oh, I'm not even threatening mate. I just want to somehow. Okay, now I'm threatening mate in two or three or four. Right? Check. And then check. You should have played king d1. But he flags. Okay. Bad game. <laughs> We're moving on. Z fox with the line, queen f5, king g2, bishop f3, tick, tick, tick. Oh, I had some discovery. Oops. Okay. Killer mania. Let's play, let's play a dragon. a3. Okay, I'll play g6. Let's play this. I think this is playable because... Oh, actually, never mind. Okay, we'll have some like close Sicilian dragon type setup. Always play h5. I gotta play much quicker. It's my one defect. Like streaming and playing blitz, I just play too slowly. Maybe I'll castle queen side here. Try and like target the king side weaknesses. Does he just allow f6? I think he just allowed f6. And he's trying to play it off cool, but I'm just up a bishop. And things are falling apart. Like Black's going to get a kingside attack now. Unless he keeps sacking. Uh, knight d5 is a decent move. Okay, but Black's just up a rook. Queen take pawn. Why not? So I want to attack too. Like queen h4, bishop d4, some attacking resources. I'm okay with this line. Oh, I'm not okay with that line. I just lost a queen. I feel like the longer this tournament goes, the like lower quality the chess becomes. This is such a bad game. Wow. Okay, I have to fight back. Bishop e5. Or bishop take b2 maybe to start with. I think win a pawn, why not? I'll put the bishop on f6. The material situation isn't that bad, it's just my king is a bit unsafe. He wants to play knight d6. Good move. Hmm. Scary position. Yeah, not the most pleasant situation here. Because knight d6 is a major threat. F5 is hanging. Thinking about just taking on f7. I'll do it. I have now two minors for the queen. But at least I keep the bishop pair. And this bishop's so strong. The oh, bishop, oh, he can't play bishop b5. I want, the, I want to get the rook to the g file. It might be slow, though. But if I can play, like, king, king d7, maybe? And rook f8. His rook's gonna come to e1. 
Maybe I go for like h4, h3. Hmm. This pawn is falling. This is pretty unfortunate. And my time. My precious time. Take, take, take. Okay, I don't think he can defend g2. So maybe that's my one hope. Oh, never mind. He's just counterattacking. Oh, such a bad game. I was up a rook earlier, too. That's what happens. I'm just getting tired. Okay, I just hung in the more material. Oh, whoop. I wanted to offer a draw, but he just missed that he could take my rook. I didn't mean to offer a draw. I meant to resign. Um, but let's try and push pawns. Miracles do happen. Because there's still some mating ideas against his king. Like if he plays the wrong pre-move. Okay, I resign. Next game. That was really sad. Uh, oh, I'm playing a GM. GM Krikor. Let's play a London. Who is this guy? Bishop f4. This guy is from Brazil. Never heard of him. Play e3. Somewhat trendy line. Uh, knight b5. I think this line is supposed to be pleasant for white. Can I play this move? I think I can play that move. Like in Blitz, I'm I'm fine with this. Like just uh, sack the exchange, get some kingside attack. Um, oh, Braden was asking a question earlier. I don't know if I responded. Going to study with some games. Okay, see ya, Braden. If you have a question, just send me a private message. Krikor has won several Kings Arena tournaments. Um, I'll have to take him down. I mean, this is my first ever Kings Arena tournament. Okay, I'm trying to provoke h6, so now there's some target to attack. Queen e8, okay. d6 is weak. Maybe knight d6 is coming. h6 is also kind of hanging. This looks like a pleasant position. I'll try and avenge Daniel Moreno for uh, Krikor wrecking him. I mean, this could be wreckage very soon for black. His rooks are useless here. My minor pieces are good. Knight d6 is coming. I can castle queenside if necessary. Uh, let's start by casting queenside. Knight e5 on the horizon. Question is, does knight d6 do anything? It's a decent square. And I would like to play knight e5. That's got to be fine. Especially if he has to trade off this uh, dark squared bishop. Because now my, my dark squared bishop is just a monster on e5. And he's going to have issues, especially if I can like rook lift. He wants to trade knights. I could win b7. But that opened files for the rooks. Yeah, let's just trade. I'm okay with this. I want to play g4 next. Open the g file. Get the rook to g1. f4 should be fine. I mean, maybe he'll play queen g4. But then h6 hangs. No, the queen's tied down to h6. So he's going for the queen trade. I still want to play g4. Queen h5, I can hop in. 
e6 is attacked, b7 is attacked. So he defends. Thing about playing GMs like this, they put up resistance. Take some extra effort to convert. But okay, the position's so good. Uh, let's prepare g4. Idea is g4, pawn take g4, then queen e2. So he's getting ready for that. So maybe I play queen c2. Still preparing g4. And if I don't be beat him in the position, I'll beat him on time. I think that's the plan. Put the rook attacking the pawn. Hmm. defend with the king. Looks wrong, but I want to play queen b3. And he actually has no way to exploit the king. Like h8 is off limits. And I'm going to infiltrate queen d6 coming. And his queen is actually out of play to defend. So he's going to cocoon. Um, but this should just be over somehow. I can take a pawn. Take a few pawns. Mm, push up here. Oh, let's push a pawn first. Wait, I should move a bit quicker. I'll put the pawn on a6. Make sure it's defended. Maybe put the queen on b something. Oops. Not the most impressive time scramble. Whoa, I have to be careful now. What's going on? Hey, he flagged. Okay. <laughs> it was almost falling apart. I think he had repetition with queen g3 there. Um, but most of that game was good for the most part. I have a streak of one. I have 51 points. I'm in 14th place. Um, there's only 13 minutes left, which only means probably just a few games left. We'll play another Grand Prix attack. Oh, this is kind of annoying, actually, because if he plays knight g4, I have to play rook d2. But it's still okay. He traded off his light squared bishop, so this bishop is slightly more powerful. If he gives me a chance, I'll play h3. He wants to play b5. Let's play a4. a5, positional. Oh, what does that move? What to do here? Let's just go for f5. Very thematic break. Open up some lines. I didn't even see that pawn was hanging. Um, I guess that's a free pawn, but I don't really care about the, the queen side. I care about the king side. So now there's some ideas of like taking on g6, reposition the queen to g3. Um, he just moves back, he's being calm. Keep the pawn tension. I'll play bishop g5. Ideas of queen e3, queen h3, maybe bishop h6 at some point. Put the bishop back on b3. So who's leading? Oh, Eric Hansen, of course. Oh, I got forked. 
It's what happens, just not paying attention. It's not the end of the world. I should still win this. It's still a nice attack, but that was not necessary. I mean, on the right side, he had to trade off his knight, which is maybe a key defender in these sort of situations. I'm going to build up pressure on f7. Now this is probably a major threat, f take g6, which I don't think he defended against. I mean, what to do here? His f7 is attacked three times, or four times actually, only defended twice. Okay, reasonable. Yeah, e6 was the best move. I can take here now. Maybe I'll go for bishop f6. I'm expecting king h8. He plays king take h7. So there's some discussion about where the bishop should go in Grand Prix. I mean, usually the common squares are bishop c4 or bishop b5. But yeah, this should be over. Maybe it was a blessing in disguise that I got forked. Just led to a quicker attack. Uh, how do I finish this? Maybe rook h6. Okay, next game. Maybe time for one more game? Hey, I'm playing Krikor again. Let's try and beat him again. Uh, I'll play a dragon, or a, a Taimanov. It's considering playing the dragon. g3. I'll play my pet line. I don't think this is a great line, but it's... Not bad for Blitz. H4. I'm trying to play quickly. I'm actually out of theory, but... Um... All these moves look reasonable. I can put the knight on e5. Tempo on the queen. Then maybe I'll like take on e3 and play knight c4. Or maybe b5 first. Just preparing knight c4. Keeping the tension. Making him think. Because the last game I beat him, he took way too much time like early in the game. And then I just had to flag him. So knight c4 here looks nice. Ooh, we could trade. Yeah, we could trade, then I have e5, and his bishop is dead. Maybe just bishop e6. Bishop e6 or bishop b7, or king e7. So many choices. Let's play this, a centralizing move. If he plays f4, very important move, f6. I completely forgot about b3. That was unnecessary. Hmm, that was bad. Because now I'm just losing a pawn. Unless, do I have b4 here? Wait a minute. Oh, that's not good. I'm going to play b4 and try and confuse him. I forgot b3 was a threat. Maybe I win c2 in some position. And this d4 square for the knight is, uh, is a very real possibility. Yeah, that's annoying. King f6, he has f4. But maybe that's still okay. 
is we can trade off rooks. Oh, but then he has g5. So if he plays f4, maybe I take and then put the king on e5. That's scary. I mean, I don't see the killer blow here, but it looks very scary because now the bishop is a very active piece. But I do have knight e3 coming. And there's no clear check that he can deliver. Now he's threatening. What is he threatening? Knight d3, maybe? Knight d3, king d4. I don't know what's going on. This is crazy. I mean, somehow black is up two pawns. When things kind of turned around. Prevent knight d3. And he can start winning pawns back. Let's reinforce everything with this move. But my time situation is not good. Active rook. Double attack, actually. Um, let's bring the other rook in. Rook d2 could be a problem for him. It's probably going to be another time scramble. The knight can come to e4, which is not the most pleasant thing for me. What to do? Maybe just f6. Ooh, knight c3 coming. Wait, I have this move. One rook there. Uh, f6, okay. Got to move quicker. Expecting rook b5. I mean, maybe knight c3 will come too. Okay, my rook should go to c2. I don't think I'm getting mated. Just have to move quickly. And I'll be able to trade off something with the bishop on d5. Put the rooks on the second. Though what am I threatening? Yeah, his knight should have gone to e4, not the bishop. Now he realizes that. No, I get forked. Okay. It's okay. And then just flag him in this position. Hey, I won another game. 2-0 and against that guy. Having trouble against the weaker players, but against the GMs, life is good. Daniel Moreno asking for recommendations for learning the Tarash defense in the French as white. Wait, the Tarash defense? You mean just the Tarash against the French as white? Um, look at the games of Michael Adams, because he consistently plays e4, and he's pretty knowledgeable in Tarash. Just type in like Michael Adams French and you'll find a bunch of Tarash games. So there's only two minutes left. Um, I actually don't know, like if two minutes go by and we're still playing, does the game still count for the tournament? I would guess not, but maybe. Looks like I'll finish in top 10. I actually don't know the prize structure. Should probably figure that out. E6. Take, take, take. Let's play this. The Latvian Gambit. Latvian Gambit's a surprise opening, but it's not like an opening you should play long term. But it's not a bad like thing to have in your repertoire, like just for Blitz, especially against lesser experienced players. So the H file is open. I'm going to try and make use of this somehow. Queen d2, threatening maiden 2. Rook h8 is normal. On castle queen side. 
when the time runs out, all games finish? Really? Do they end just abruptly, or we get do we get to finish? I mean, we should be able to finish the game, like at least for rating points. And I'll try and play quicker here. Uh, to take some risk. Mm, I can't take that. Let's do this. Oops, some attack. Queen e7. They end immediately? What is that? That's bogus. So what's what's the result then? Okay, please resign. I'm just up a knight. There's six seconds left though. Just resign. No, I lost a knight back. That's annoying. I mean, we should at least finish the game. Okay, well, good tournament, I guess. Um, that was a new experience. I finished top 10. I played 23 games? What does this mean? Oh, people can't see what I'm looking at. But if I do this, then people can see what I'm looking at. So it says 58, so I assume that's my score. But then when I hover over it, it says 18.5 out of 23. Did I actually play 23 games? Maybe I did. Um, and the highest scoring player was Eric Hansen with 75 points. Um, interesting. Uh, okay, that was a new experience. Um, I guess maybe I can keep going. Um, yeah, it's it's different from Lee Chess, I guess, in a few ways. Um, I'm going to find the King's Arena page. What? King's Arena. Just find the announcement. I'm just curious about the prize structure. Oh, there's only top three places. Top viewed title player. That's probably Eric Hansen. Uh, that's unfortunate. Winner of the Twitter poll. Can't be the same person as above. Okay. Well, maybe I have a chance for that. Um, best performing non-title player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Interesting. Well, that was cool. Um, it wasn't my main intention to win a prize. It was just my main goal to like finish the tournament and do a somewhat watchable stream. So I hope people enjoyed that. Um, I might be back tonight for like just another uh, another stream. Um, tomorrow's a big day. Tomorrow is uh, the Lee Chess titled arena. It's gonna be probably a more, more viewed tournament than this. Um, am I allowed to go to Lee Chess from this stream? I think I am, because I'm not like a partner. So let's switch over to Lee Chess. Um, Oh, but the thing is kind of messed up. Oh, thank you, Z Nation Chess, for subscribing. Um, but just to share with everyone, tomorrow, uh, if you're a title player, you should play this. Uh, there's over 100, there's 136 title players sign, signed up. I'm pretty sure Magnus Carlsen is going to join because he's played the last three events. Um, it's a two-hour bullet tournament. Um, and I'm doing official commentary for it. I don't know if people can see that, but uh, you can you can watch my commentary. I'm sure other players will be streaming too. Um, Crew64 hosting me with 11 viewers. Appreciate that from Crew64. Wow, maybe I should keep the stream going. Um, wow, this is so weird. I'm using Lee Chess, going back and forth between Lee Chess and Chess.com. Um, well, I'm trying to make everyone happy. Uh, I appreciate the sub from M Singer for two months in a row, and Z Nation Chess six months in a row. He's probably the most loyal subscriber. Uh, really appreciate that. Um, yeah, I will most likely be back tonight because I I want to test the um, I want to test the stream on Lee Chess. I'm gonna like change the format just to make sure I can do like commentary smoothly tomorrow. Uh, appreciate the follow from GTX Gaming 23. Uh, yeah, you finally get to meet me. 
Um, yeah, for any new viewers, let me know where you're from. Because um, sometimes I, I'm i not sure like what the best time is to stream. Um, I'm currently in California, so I'm on Pacific time. So I'll probably be back around 10 or 11 p.m. tonight. Just do a quick stream. Maybe do a, a Crew 64 match if he's back too. Uh, Motu Man, I, I do have a schedule, but um, currently there's very few things on it because I am, uh, I'm just so busy with traveling. It's hard to plan ahead, like even a few days. So this coming week, I'll be more flexible. I'll probably put together a more set schedule for this week once I figure out my free time. Um, oh, GTX Gaming is from California as well. Interesting. And physical appearance is exactly like you. Wait, what? He looks like my twin brother. Interesting. I've been compared to a lot of different people in terms of my appearance. I've been compared to like a younger version of Kasparov, been compared to uh, this TV show called Nathan For You. Uh, who else? Um, Robin Williams, I think. Mr. Bean. Whatever. Okay. Um, thanks everyone for watching. Um, before I go, I'll have to find someone to host. Um, can I host Eric Hansen? Who's streaming? Can I go to Twitch? Let me quickly check. I'm going to do a search for chess. Mm, or is anyone streaming on Lee Chess? Oh, Norbert. Let's go watch and streamers. I want to host someone I know, but I don't know any of these people. Um, Twitch.tv. This is going to be weird for a moment, but to chess. Let's do a search. I'm sure there's other people from that tournament who are streaming. Um, I should know someone here. Oh, there's some foreign people streaming too. Um, what is this guy? Oh, he just ended. No, I want to find a streamer who speaks English. Uh, someone streaming on chest 24. Oh, desert booge. I think desert booge has like, has been a pretty loyal viewer. So, I don't know what he's doing. Is he doing atomic chess? I'll host Hazard Desert Booge. Um, I have to go back to Twitch. Oh no, I can do it from the chat. Okay, so host Desert. Oh, someone's asking a question. Riemann is saying, is there a story behind you saying knight take d5 instead of knight takes d5? Is there a difference? Take or takes? I mean, knight take d5 takes slightly more effort to say. Wait, what, what, what did I just say? Um, if you add the s, it, it takes slightly more effort. So it's easier just to say take. Um, but now I'm confusing myself. Let's end the stream here hosting Desert Booge. Actually, raiding Desert Booge. There we go. And I'll see everyone later.